So last year I was sat over there and um, I was listening to someone on stage say a very similar line. And I had many of the things that I have now, the same job, a loving husband, beautiful and smart son. He's three now, so he's a bit, he's a bit annoying. But, um, but, but I was struggling, I was really struggling. Um, and not a lot of people knew that I was struggling, that I'd lost a lot of the passion that I had in my life, apart from for my son. And I didn't want to lose that as well. But nobody really knew that at the time. And then my friend Sonia invited me to the Flame Centre, but I was busy and, you know, I don't live in Coventry, I live in Birmingham and all the things we tell ourselves, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, these meditators are a bit weird, really, aren't they? So, you know. I know it's what you're thinking, even if you don't want to say it, but I've said it now, so we can all relax. We're all friends here. Um, despite that, Sonia kept going and she invited me to the cathedral event and I thought, okay, well, why not? So I enjoyed the event and I hope you're going to enjoy your event as well. And I knew that the centre was what I'd been waiting for. That Dad was a teacher with a scientific background, which was really important for me personally, um, and a strong meditation practice. And plus, the classes on Tuesdays were free. So everyone loves free. So I changed my work location for one day a week and I committed to giving it a fair go. My first attempt to get to meditation class went like this. The clock was wrong, I left late, there was terrible traffic and I couldn't find it. I literally, and I mean literally, ran through the streets like a crazy woman. You know when you see someone running and you're like, should I, should I be running? Like, they're seriously running. And you look around, you're like, oh no. Nah. That's how hard I was proper running. And I get there, I get to the library, and the librarian looks and moves like he's just come out of a crypt. And I'm like, where, where do I go? Where do I go? And he's like, I'll show you. It took a while, it did take a good while. But finally I was there and I'm at the meditation room door and it says, do not disturb. So even though like, I knew it, like, inside me I was too late, now I am disturbed. And I'm like, just chuck me in the chair and meditate me, meditate me. But I'm like, I'm too late, so I have to leave and I'm inconsolable. And I'm walking around this city trying to pull myself together because it's a lunchtime session and I've got to go back to work. And I get back to work eventually, and I have to like pretend that everything's okay, but I can't do it, so I go home. Sorry to my colleagues who are in the uh, audience. Um, so I go home, but as soon as I get home, I realize how fragile I am. And it was, it was really a shock to me how delicate I was. So I downloaded the audio straight away and was like, right, if they ain't gonna med meditate me, I'll meditate myself. Um, and so the next time, from then on, I've been meditating two times a day, every day. And I made sure I was super early for that next class. So within a few months, my family commented on how calm I was and how meditation was key out my mouth. But it didn't even take that long. Within the first week, I started planning things in my diary again. More people wanted to spend time with me. Look, look at all you. Perfect example, really. Um, a retreat later, work colleagues started commenting on me and within a year a friend needed some help and I set myself a task that I never would have thought I could achieve. In fact, I wouldn't have even tried it before meditation. I would have just gone, oh, I can't do that. But I surpassed my goal. Most of the changes I've mentioned have been from an external view, mainly because it's easier to explain more than my internal personal development. I went into meditation hoping to regain my old, joyful, passionate self and to feel calmer. I never found her. I started on a journey of self-discovery, peeling layers of old, irrelevant concepts to find a new, more complex version of myself. What does that mean? Well, in truth, I don't know what it means. I'm still peeling and cracking and revealing, but it's intriguing and I'm excited. The first retreat was a real shift for me. I had to acknowledge that for me, meditation was more than just being calm. It had a deeper spiritual side. Spirituality can mean different things to different people. For me, and in this context, it means a connection to wisdom that goes beyond religion, gender, and race. A wisdom that sits at the core of our beings, and I mean our beings, that we want to live out but often fall short. Well, meditation, Practice makes perfect. I realized my choice to meditate may change the focus of my life and in turn, my openness to my own destiny. Okay, now we're talking destinies, so obviously meditation is definitely for weird people, so yeah. 
Personally, I know that I've never been more connected, more awake and more excited by my life. I was once told I was addicted to meditation and I thought about it and they were right, I am addicted, but not to meditation. I'm addicted to living, experiencing and connecting with myself and others in ways I've never known. Trying to explain the experience of meditation and some of the positive experiences that meditators can have is like trying to explain the experience of strong love or loss. It's impossible, but you feel compelled to try and try and try, as some of my friends and family will tell you. But seriously, the Flame Center has been instrumental on my journey. The people who run and work at the Flame Center are selfless in so many ways. Their advice and support has been invaluable, and now I see them as family, which I don't say lightly. In fact, my family has grown exponentially. Having the level of support and, dare I say it, love, allows you to explore safely with like-minded people and share experiences with others, others that use the centre. Finally, for my, for me, finally for me, life with meditation gives me more connected, vibrant moments. Suddenly, I don't want a life with meditation. I want a meditative life. I want to strip away the things that sap the colour and numb my emotions. Because no matter what they say, you can't numb the bad emotions without numbing the good. I want to leave behind the things that eat away at me, that lead me to live in fear, that worst of all, rob me of precious moments. This moment, if you're not thinking about the washing up or whatever else we've got to do, if we're really present, this very moment is ours, yours and mine, never to be again, never ever to be recreated. I think that's something really beautiful. I want to live every moment in vibrant max vision, all in, because every moment may not be as nerve wracking, humbling, or as beautiful as this, looking out and sharing with my friends. But every moment may not be beautiful like this, but they are mine and they are mine alone. Thank you.